Welcome to the um, August 9th, 2017 uh, Select Board and Board of Health meeting here in um, Town of Deerfield Town Hall. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for May 31st and July 12th. Um, both of you have a chance to yes. look at them? Okay. Uh, I, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of May 31st. Second. Um, if there's no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. July 12th, I make a motion we approve the minutes of July 12th, 2017. Second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Um, aye. Uh, please make that unanimous. We have select board announcements and comments. Uh, Townwide tag sale um, has been suggested for October 7th. Do we have any issues with that? For a second. We do have scheduled um, yeah. things at 7 and 7.15, so um, it's okay. after 7. It's after 7, yeah. okay. Um, why don't we do our, our appearances, and then we'll come back to okay. Thank tag you. sale issues and um, sewer. 7 o'clock was um, Yankee Candle, but apparently there is a well, fire, unfortunately, in Sunderland. Well, so. But I think there are, uh, there are, so, there, yeah. uh, oh, yes, we do here. have people here to help. Okay, why don't you come up? No, no, um, no we Yankee, we're talking seven. about the Yankee Candle fireworks display. Trevor, uh, Bill gave you? Yes, Bill, uh, Bill gave me something to read and said that, um, that Berkshire Sky Art would be here to Berkshire talk. Fireworks, yeah. Oh, there you go. okay, great. Our website is Berkshire, Berkshire Sky Art. Gotcha. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, how can I help? What do we... Well, did you have something to read? From yes. Why don't, yes. I, why don't I read this yes, letter? That, that's good. Um, for those who do not, uh, do not know me, my name is Bill Swayze, and I'm the Director of Facilities at, uh, for Yankee Candle. I am standing in for Wade Bassett, Director of Store Operations, who is away on vacation this week. Um, with me tonight is Judy and Bob from Berkshire Fireworks. Um, on September 18th and 19th, our Yankee Candle will be hosting uh, fourth quarter kickoff meetings for our uh, a number of our local employees as well as our retail store managers from across the country. The kickoff will be held down at the Academy of Music Monday morning in Northampton and will end with a sit-down dinner for approximately 700 under a tent at our flagship store Tuesday evening. The thought was uh, to close that dinner meeting with a fireworks display at, at approximately 8.30 p.m. Our retail management team reached out to the Berkshire uh, Fireworks and Sky Art, and uh, after surveying several properties, the decision came down to having a small, smaller show that would begin on our vacant field across from our flagship store, followed by a bigger display from uh, the town-owned uh, land, formerly uh, the site of Oxford Pickle, and finishing with a grand finale from, our, from um, back on our vacant field. Yankee Candle is uh, here tonight to ask for permission to use the vacant field uh, formerly occupied by Oxford Pickle for this event. Uh, I would now like uh, Judy and Bob to come up and describe the display, safety equipment, permit, permitting requirements, and answer any questions. So, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So we are Berkshire Fireworks, and we're a fully insured and licensed fireworks display company from Berkshire County. And uh, so we were contracted or asked to come out. So we came out about a week ago or so, and we looked at several sites, and they decided that one, well, we all decided that one was the most feasible. Um, so the process is a standard one. We go through the local fire department. We submit the permit. We um, have to do a site plan and um, submit all of our paperwork and uh, license and all of that. And then he passes it on to the state fire marshal. And a lot of times with a new site, the state fire marshal will come out and visit and make sure that all the safety procedures and standards are in place. And um, so that's it. I think they want a short display, 10 to 15 minutes. OK. Um, I Longer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway. I visited, I visited uh, met with Kevin because it's just adjacent to the parcel that uh, he's talked with Bill, the yep. chief, um, to the highway garage. They're all highly safety conscious people. And um, I talked to our insurance company. And as long as we have a certificate of right. insurance, yep. we should be fine. 
know, we looked at the site. It's got a nice perimeter there, heavy tree cover around the edge, you know, yeah. and, and the distance is good from the houses from, oh, I think it's Thayer Street. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know the roads quite as well, but um, Great. You know, it's a nice site for, for fireworks and would be visible for the whole town. I think the center of town, too, if anybody yes. you know, wanted to watch from around yeah. the area. I think that was their intention was to obviously to have the town. So, well. Yeah, so just to clarify, across the street you would do a smaller display and then the larger stuff would, would go from yeah, we this had, lot. Yeah, I, I think the vacant field that he was talking about was the corn field? Well, either. That would, that would specify it. Yeah. 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 Well, that's right in your crop production. I don't. I got you. Right, I'm, that's why that would be the smaller. Um, like just ground stuff. Right, yeah. it would be smaller shells because we are able to get, we need double the distance from the um, fertilizer. Fertilizer, yeah. So, we didn't I, I guess that I have a couple of concerns. One is that fertilizer is extremely mm -hmm. explosive. Is it a wise decision to set up fireworks that close to that type of facility? I mean, well, it wouldn't burn. It would, there could be uh, an explosion. You could lose half the town. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of chemicals there. Well, I, don't know. I mean, we're following the state, you know, and the NFPA okay. codes. It's double the distance to any okay. hazard such as that. I assume we could talk to them about it. Okay. I, I was where just going to say, is, maybe the, the thing to do is we could just double check with the mm -hmm. fire marshal. Right. Sure. Um, and have Bill yeah. double check. Yeah. I mean, check. if they're... If the yeah. fire marshal is okay with it, I'm I'm good. But yeah, yeah it's, a, well, it's a good point because it is. Yeah. But Bill yeah. is the fire chief. That's right. Well, that's why I said it's the fire marshal, marshal state, yeah. the state yeah. fire marshal. Yeah. So um, there's that's no right. um, yeah. issues with, okay. um, you know, whatever. Right. Hmm. Um, so we could get in touch with the state fire marshals. I, um, so that's Tuesday the 19th. That's what it says here. What yes. It's yeah. Tuesday the 19th, September 19th? Yes. Oh, I thought it was Wednesday. No, no, no it's Tuesday. Yeah, he said, he told me. Oh, it starts the on the 18th, but on the 19th, 19th is the finish. Is the finish. Mm -hmm. And which is a Tuesday. Uh, oh, this is September 19th, yep. What so, do you do if it rains? Excuse me? If it rains, well, what do you. If it's showery, yeah. if it's a total torrential rain, then we would cancel. And But if it's showers off and on, we can set up and cover. Yep. And, and then wait for a window of opportunity. Yeah, it'll be Tuesday the 19th. You know, we can't yeah. fire if it's 20 mile per hour winds and if there's electrical storms. We would have to wait for them to pass like okay. a thunderstorm. Okay. Um, why don't we, um, I, I would feel comfortable making the motion um, subject to um, contingent just on the fire state market. fire marshal just double checking mm -hmm. the whole fertilizer question because I think that's a really good point. Um, and, um, and, and making sure there, we don't have any other. I was just thinking over at the certificate uh, of insurance if we have that on file, and, and um, the, because our highway garage is right there. I was just thinking all the gas tanks that we fill over at the highway garage, but yeah. I assume I, if it's far enough away yeah, from that, I don't know how many feet you need to be away from our filling tanks. Yeah, Bill would have been here, but there's a major fire going on, and, okay. and he, I think, could have answered yeah. the due diligence well, we that they've yeah. already undertaken. Yeah. So. Why don't we just make it subject to um, our concerns about the highway garage um, tanks okay. and the okay. uh, um, fertilizer, right. and, and just have the field uh, state fire marshal um, yeah. double check that it's for fine. us. They have to be informed of all yeah. Yeah. Yep. potential Bill would submit hazards. the permit to them. Okay. Yeah. They would come out probably and do a site inspection. Yeah, they're very right. nice. They're really nice. And if we have a real yeah. question, then I don't think that would be an issue at all. They're usually very good. And um, certificate of insurance, we can name the town as additional yeah. insured or? That would be perfect. Yes, so. that's what we need. Okay, yeah. so it would just be the town of Deerfield? Yes. Yep. yep, the town of Deerfield. For, okay. and, you, and if you can just give that on file to Wendy, then I, I would be comfortable in making that motion to support this. Okay, mm -hmm. and do you have an email address I, you or know, I email it to you? I have my cards, which I can go give you one. Okay. <laughs> and then we can get your last names and get those in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. So you made a motion? Yep. I, I second the motion. Okay. Yep. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming out. We'll look, look forward to this. How Sorry fun. that Bill couldn't be here. That's yeah, fine. no, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm, it's always Duty awful to call. have a fire. Thank you, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on our uh, 
Yep, it's 7.15, so um, Come on we up. have the liquor transfer, li liquor license transfer for and a change of room um, yes. manager. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. Our permanent opposing counsel. <laughs> 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 Although we work very well together. Yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, I've been here a lot lately. <laughs> I know. You'll have to reintroduce her to okay. yourself to my our name is, My name is Christy audience. Bodine. Yep. I'm an attorney in Amherst. I'm representing Oban Pan Corporation. And this is uh, Kristen Henry. And she's the proposed manager for uh, Oban Pan. She's actually the existing manager for Chandler's. So it's not really a change of manager, but True. it sort of is technically. Yeah. So change of company. We're here. Um, so Chandler's is closed. And um, Oban Pan is going to be reopening the restaurant. And they want to transfer the full liquor license from Chandler's to Oban Pan. And that's why we're here. And the application's been submitted. Um, Kristen's been managing the restaurant for a long time. She's got mm -hmm. lots of experience. Yep. Um, they're not quite sure how much they're going to be using the license, but they want the opportunity to be, be able to offer uh, full alcohol to their, to I, their patrons. I know you have tips training. Um, I do. I have a serve yep. safe certification in alcohol and food service. And I. It's not a, a requirement, but um, I, I really feel it's so important to have everybody that is serving to have tri tips training. Mm -hmm. So if you can just make sure that that happens. I can. Uh, some of the staff did come with me from Chandler's. Great. So um, some of them are already certified. So that's a good start. Yeah. Yep. And I'd be happy to do that. Uh, we did discuss uh, maybe me becoming a proctor and teaching classes for right. um, the group. Oh, that's wonderful. That'd be yeah. great. <laughs> I, um, like I said, it, I just feel much more comfortable if, if everyone has the training. And we've never had any problems. And it's wonderful that this, there is some carryover of staff. And yeah. so that's good. OK. Yeah. I don't, did you have any questions? No, I have no questions. I'm OK. OK. Do you want to yeah. make a motion? Uh, I make a motion that we approve the liquor license transfer. Um, the motion. Right? Excuse me. I have the motion. Yeah. Which Where did I put those? To your left. Which one? Number two. Oh, okay. I move to approve the transfer of all alcohol restaurant on premises liquor licenses number zero 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 two two dash R S dash zero two seven six from Yankee Candle Restaurant Corporation doing business as Chandler's Restaurant to ABP Corporation do, doing business as Aubon Penn uh, premises located at 25 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, with the new manager to be Kristen Henry. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And yeah. it's nice that you're on a month. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Appreciate it. Do you have a date to open? or August 25th. August 25th. Wonderful. So we're preparing to do um, a soft open on the 24th, but definitely okay. open on the 25th. Great. Okay. Very excited. I beg your pardon? Is Gianni open? open I don't know. He hasn't told me what night, so. Well, because I heard from um, a singer who yeah. said he's opening. On that night, he's singing. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but they, they, and you'll open without the liquor license if, if it hasn't been correct. By then. That yeah, is correct. Yeah. So. But. May I confirm the hours in which you will be serving alcohol? It's the hours that were on the form that you submitted. Okay. Yeah. So the one that I sh emailed you this afternoon. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're going to actually serve all of those hours, but they're going to be permitted to serve during those hours. Do you recall what hours. they are so, so we can have it for the public information? It was. It's, it's from the 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. weekdays and noon time to 10 p.m. on Sundays. Great. Okay. okay. I think that's what you had at Chandler. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. the same yeah. hours. Same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe that's where I got it from. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, I'm pretty sure it was the same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you well, so thank much. You. Have a great night. You thank too. you. Um, we're a little early for... Um, the River Road Solar Array. Is that okay, though, Wendy? We could go ahead with that. Wait. Um, well, this is. A, um, I think Are we need to stick with 7:45 for the Deerfield Inn. I, 
Yeah. It's scheduled for 7.45, and I think we need to, because it's a yeah. public hearing, wait till that time, yes. Yeah, I'm Were sorry. Were you not that. told that it was 7.45? Okay. All right. Enjoy okay. our show. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I think legally we have to yep. do that. Okay. So the um, Joe isn't here then. So we'll wait on that. Um, let's go back to the townwide tag sale. Mm -hmm. um, it's October seventh. Did we check that? Did you, Pat? Did you check that with John? She said report. Oh, okay. Sunderland would like to also have their townwide tag Ooh. sale on the same day. Cool. Oh, perfect. Nice. They have a different idea in mind. I won't um, talk on behalf of them, but theirs is tied in somehow to their 250th anniversary. Yep. Um, ours is not going to be tied into our anniversary, but the gentleman that I've been talking to created this poster in hopes that we were going to join or that they were going to be allowed to join and have it the same day. So wonderful. created wonderful. this beautiful poster. And Great. Kind of. Uh, the only thing I wanted you to check is just make sure that um, there was no, I mean, did you check with John Pachork, our chief, um, that we don't have any other major, event, major events happening? Actually, I haven't talked to the chief yet about that. I will. OK. We haven't publicized anything. We've just had a couple of phone calls asking whether we were going to have it or not. And uh, yeah. our response okay. is that uh, if we have it, yeah. it's usually the first Saturday of October. Right. And I don't think there is anything going on but um, that I'm aware of. But just make sure, just so that there's no, because um, that means there's extra traffic and Right. stuff on the roads and we don't want any already having problems okay. so just just need to run it by him all right i thought i emailed you that request when you when you ran it by me i said i was fine with it except just check with john you had said that you didn't want it or maybe wendy said she didn't want it tied in with the i didn't I remember said, the part about john okay doesn't maybe matter. you said it. I thought it was premature to tie it into our anniversary six years from six Oh, years yes, from now. yes, and I agree. That's the part I remembered. Because we don't have a committee, a signed committee yet. But um, Okay, so you'll check with John. I will. Yep. But I think it's a good idea, and it's a great way to raise money for um, our future celebration. We've mm -hmm. got to get that committee formed. We, we need to sort out um, yes. the direction to the committee and, and we, then we can put out advertise for the committee we also want to put together some um, if we want to participate in um, Sunderland's celebration right. we need to be a little bit more organized we weren't yeah we weren't too organized for uh, Conway's although you went that yes was wonderful. it was nice we had yeah. a great time but yeah we, we need to float this time okay so. I'm, I'm delegating to Kip oh, my Kip you got to <laughs> move on that he's got the it's going, yeah. to it's going to involve hay, corn stalks. Perfect. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Um, okay, That's next it. item on the agenda is sewer management areas. Um, we had talked about that mm -hmm. um, for quite a while. So do you want to just give us some background and and do you want us to actually vote on it or do you want consens just consensus? I think that I think it would be a good idea for us to vote on it and, okay. and, and declare that and just move forward. Um, I think that everything that I've heard from town council that it's uh, not a problem. It's within our authority to do so. Um, I think there was some discussion about the enterprise fund not having two. All the money could still go to the same fund. It would just be a, a bookkeeping thing where we can separate it out so we can uh, track the costs. And so the, the only thing I just wanted to make sure is that we checked with Brenda that it could be tracked through yes. our yes. accounting. Yes. Okay. She said it could be. Okay. Yeah. So All right. Have we um, just trying to figure out how uh, do we have any background on this? Is this something we we truly want to do? I mean, have we? I have been, not heard enough about it probably oh, to vote I'm, and I'm right sorry. this I, this moment. I but. had um, wanted to make sure that well, we had we have two separate plans, and so that was sort of always. And I know one's certainly taking a lot of the you know effort because we don't have a lot of tax base up there. Yeah. So the idea was to just make two different areas so that you would be able to track the expenses and, uh, and assign expenses to each one. So 
so um, we've been talking about it for a while. Sort of even more importantly is the next step, which is determining how the different, how there might be different rate structures in those Correct. management areas. That, but we're not ready to. Right. Have Thank any you. Vote okay. This, point. this is not. So it's just what? to kind of yeah, be able to study the different right. areas. Well, it's just to establish the two areas. You know, so we'll, that you can assign costs. Do we do that ge geographically, and where's the cutoff? No, we do it. It's per plant. just per plant. Per plant. It's whatever called, goes into that plant. Right. Whatever. Gotcha. Whatever, because it's it's already well defined. What users use what plant. So Correct. It's, there's not a lot of work involved. There's Every, a pipe connected. <laughs> there's a pipe connected. So yeah. Gotcha. That's okay. Anyway. All right. Sounds okay. good. So I make a motion that we establish the sewer management areas of uh, Old Deerfield and South Deerfield individual. I I'm feel comfortable seconding that. Uh, you okay. Because like it's study something it a we've been more. yeah yep. been talking about it for a while. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, sewer regulations, fines for um, wipe disposals. I I do want to mention that. Um, thank Kevin and the highway department. Um, the pump at Captain Lathrop was overheating. Mm -hmm. And because Kevin noticed the draw of electric, he was able to intervene, saved us like $7,000 for replacement, and it's working fine. So, we, um, just so you know For the we, meantime, real, right? Yeah, Excuse well, me. for the meantime, yes. Right. It, I met with uh, a contractor on site with Kevin and we reviewed that and we're waiting for a quote to put a different type of pump in there. Um, it will alleviate the problem that we have with that pump burning up, uh, but it still won't alleviate the problem of them going into the plants. So we don't have a regulation. I'm not sure if we want to call it a regulation or, or just we, uh, I'm not sure how to word it, but basically say it, it's, uh, we don't want any of these disposable wipes put into the sewer system. Um, Agreed. Not just for Captain Lathrop, everywhere. But everywhere. With Captain Lathrop, that's an area where we can track it pretty closely because there's only under 30 homes and everything gets caught in that one area. So. Um, and they're having a huge impact on the infrastructure of the oh, sewer yeah, system. Yeah, it definitely I is. I mean, it's a huge cost. It's a it's, huge cost. It's, it's and it's an easy really fix. It's a very easy fix. We need to get the education out there to people right. to stop putting disposable wipes right. down the toilet. Right. I mean, even Jane Trezier had handed out stuff at town meeting on her own initiative. and I think we may know, need door we've, to door. We put stuff in. We have gone door to door in the past. We have to go again. We need to go again, I guess. But well, I, just I I had offered if it, if it's bad weather Saturday, I will be home. And, and Trevor offered that kind of at last minute that we would we would walk the street and we would tell these people, um, you know, and suggest that they they find another way of disposing of these things. You really um, would do that? I would do that. Oh, that's I really mean, it's nice. costing the town and, and it's going to cost the sewer users a ton of money if they continue to do this in any way we can educate. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's very I, nice. I think the people would really appreciate, appreciate a knock that. on the door and explaining that even though the package says they're, they're flushable, they, well, they might be flushable, but they're not biodegradable and they cause those problems, opposed to getting a bill for $2,000 to repair their pump station. Mm -hmm. you know? um, well, so. I know. Yep. It's just, it is it is a recurring cost. Yeah. Okay. Well, how, how, how would we word that, Wendy? If, we don't really have anything written saying that the town, uh, I, I want to use the word make it illegal, but I, I just right. lost the word. Right well, now. the issue is um, one, um, Could we to make it a bylaw, you have to go to town meeting. Right. It's not, it's very difficult to enforce this kind of thing. Okay. I understand that, the, I understand and agree with the impetus to uh, make it a serious infraction, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do this and cause these kind of costs and time and, and materials. Um, um, I suppose you could make it a, I don't know what, you can't, could we you just, can't really. Could we take a vote and just say that sewer commissioners uh, are saying that these disposable wipes are not allowed in the sewer system? I mean, I guess it doesn't have a lot of teeth, but 
we don't really have anything mm -hmm. now other than just saying it's causing a problem. But how, how if I do some more research on this and see if there is something else we can find from another community? And it's not just wipes, it's other items as well. Those mm, are the, that's floss, the primary issue, but why not tackle you know, the others? T-shirts, sneakers. So um, I'll see if I can come up with language from another community that uses it in a in the way that you want to send the message. Okay. And we, you know, and in the next circular that goes out about in a, in a bill, mm -hmm. it says, you know, regulation number, and you know, exactly. pops it up, steps up Good. the okay. level of, of uh, seriousness of the I, right. you know, bad I, I just behavior. I want you both to know that I really appreciate you going um, door to door on Saturday. I, I would volunteer to go, but I'm Why don't you wait until after, after they go? <laughs> yeah. Conservation meeting. It may not rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a crappy job, but somebody's going to do it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put that on until next, so, next okay. time. I'll, I'll but I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right, 7.30. Uh, are, are you Joe? Joe Bounds. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Come on. So, Come on up. So I invited Joe um, to explain what's going on with the uh, River Road Solar Array, to explain how Marnin is no longer here, but now Kenyan Energy and how that transpired. And where we're at in the process of hooking, I, I have some knowledge, but I would rather you explain it and answer the board's questions. Because all right, thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. I appreciate the invitation and sure. got out me got me out here in very short notice, so <laughs> didn't have to wait long for the opportunity. Uh, so I work for a company called Kenyon Energy, and Kenyon Energy is an affiliate company with uh, a company called Sun Financial. So. Sun Financial is a solar holding company and an operator, owner and operator, that owns solar farms around the United States uh, for the life of the solar project. Uh, the foundation of it is to own, operate, and uh, maintain solar farms uh, from the point of inception all the way until we decommission them. Most uh, companies that come in and own solar farms usually try and just exploit the tax incentives and then sell them in seven years. Mm -hmm. Our operating procedure is companies, myself and, and my colleagues at Kenyon, uh, work tirelessly to find people like Marnin who are located around the United States developing solar projects, uh, but don't have the financing or the tax equity to be able to own those projects and manage them for the long term. So Marnin uh, worked with, uh, I think it was Tad, uh, I can't remember his name, the, uh, Tad Boyle, I think, uh, negotiated the PPAs with a whole bunch of towns in the area. Marnin acquired those PPAs from him and then put them together with the whole project where he obtained a lease with uh, WT Land out on River Road. And then once he had all the interconnection, all the design, all that stuff ready to go, he worked with us to finance and fund the construction of the project. When the construction pro or when the project reached mechanical completion, my company took over all the ownership and operation rights of the project, and we've been working with, uh, with Eversource ever since to try and get the project right across that last hurdle, which is installation of utility-based equipment, and then uh, witness testing, and then commissioning. So we are about a week away from commissioning. Nice. Great. It's been a, a very long, mm -hmm. arduous process. Uh, we determined, or we built, got the system completely built December 9th, uh, and we've been working with the utility ever since, and here we are August 9th, Yeah, and uh, we're just about done. So we uh, worked with Wendy to get all the final documentation across the line. Uh, Town of Deerfield is the host, so you're the primary benefactor on the project, uh, despite the fact that you only received 6.5% <laughs> of the actual credits. Uh, because of the pilot that Marnin negotiated with you, you receive most of the financial benefits from the project. So sort of as a, as a order of magnitude, um, based on the PPA, you should save about $5,100 a year on your energy bills, but you'll be getting $62,000 a year in taxes. Mm -hmm. So in total, any other town on the, on the power purchase agreement, the most they save is about 20 grand, so you'll be benefiting somewhere around 70. Right. Uh, now the project is very, very close to completion, so you should start to see your credits accumulating on your energy bills very shortly. Uh, 
but long term, a company called Bay4, who is our final sister product company, is going to be the ones that go out and mow the lawn and fix any projects or any problems. And uh, they have the 800 number that you can call and, and get them out there anytime you want to ask them to fix some problem or fix some fence or deal with some issue that might arise. If anyone has any complaints, you can call us and we have a 24-hour number that always has somebody ready to answer. Uh, you need that information. Yep. I, it, uh, I can send you the, the email with all the info. Uh, I believe we're going to put a sign up on the fence right. once it's done. So yep. if somebody, uh, I think we have two access areas. One is from Keats Road where yep. the public can see it and the other is on River Road. So you'd have to go through WT Land's property to get to that access point. But uh, not a lot of the array is visible from anywhere, uh, which to me is a downside, but a lot of people I understand like to have the trees instead of solar farms. But I might be a little biased <laughs> working in the field. <laughs> Show off your work. We, yeah, did, exactly. we did complain to Jim McGovern, though, about how slow our yes. source was. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Um, yeah. Yep. We had a meeting last week, and um, we brought that up. So it has uh, it's been, it's been uh, really annoying. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a little slow on this one. Uh, I have another project down the road a little bit uh, that they're not even ordering their equipment to install until the end of this month. Wow. And it, it got mechanically complete the same day this one did. So this is not the slowest one I'm working on in Massachusetts. Wow. Wow. And I, I had a conference call with... Um, Eversource representatives uh, a few days ago, and we talked before and after that. Um, they're, as soon as we get this paperwork, it sounds like they're ready to go now. Yeah. Um, the Schedule Z, um, are, do all these percentages add up to 100 now? Was that the issue with the former document? That was the issue. I, I, I made a rounding mistake and <laughs> gave them 100.01% of <laughs> our <laughs> credits, and they, they caught it. Yeah. So. Can you explain also how we, we'll now have a new account? Mm -hmm. How that works. Yeah. So uh, the essence is because we are using public-based SRECs, uh, we need a public organization to be the host. So the town of Deerfield uh, has become the default host and owner of both the meter <coughs> and the Schedule Z. So any of the other partners have to go through Deerfield. You are the only ones that have the authority to change how any of the credits are allocated or any of the distribution of those credits. Uh, don't quote me. I think you can change it twice a year, but you might only be able to change it once a year. But uh, as a result, you own the meter, so the new account number that's going to be associated with that account is your meter. So it'll be in your name, and all of the credits will accumulate to your name and then be distributed to all the different towns based on your Schedule Z. So uh, we will base our bills, our invoices, off of those credits. So every credit you receive, 88% is what we charge. So you'll, you'll save 12% on every credit. Uh, there is a floor in the PPA, so if the price of the credits goes below 7.5 cents, uh, we flatten our rate at 7.5 cents for uh, financing purposes. But right now... We're not really worried. Yeah, right now it's not that close, and prices are rising. So, yep. I have a question, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, we currently don't purchase our electricity through EverSource, through, right. through a secondary market. How will that affect us? Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. So there are four different uh, bills that EverSource charges that apply to net metering. Uh, one is your distribution your transmission, your transition, and your supply. So distribution, transmission, and transition are all charges that you do pay Eversource for. And supply is the charge that you get mm -hmm. uh, your third-party power against. So when we provide you energy from the solar farm, you get credit at the rate for the transmission, transition, distribution, and supply for the solar credit. And then those credits are applied to your Eversource charges on your other bills for transmission, transition, and distribution. So you won't get credits for the supply rates that you're paying to, to your other mm -hmm. third-party provider, but you will get credit against the charges for the other three types of bills. Um, educate me real quick, if you can. So 
by getting a roughly 5% uh, discount rate from our third party supplier and losing those credits from Eversource, would we be better off back with Eversource with the credits we get from that offset the 5% gain that we've uh, realized with the third party supplier? That's a good question. So you guys are, your, your net metering credit services or sales agreement is uh, one of the best in the industry because you get the value of the credits yep. uh, and they're applied against the economic value on your bill mm -hmm. and then you pay us a percentage of those credits which means you're always guaranteed 12 percent savings so the way this works is the solar farm is supposed to produce about seven million kilowatt hours six and a half percent of those are going to be applied to the town of deerfield's electric bills that's six and a half percent of seven million comes out to be roughly 500,000 kilowatt hours. Right now, those kilowatt hours are worth about nine cents per kilowatt hour when you add all of the different charges. So that nine cents is worth about $45,000. So Eversource is gonna take whatever you owe them over the year and subtract $45,000 off that. So you'll get a discount. So Eversource was gonna charge you four cents for your supply and you're gonna pay three and a half cents to your third party supplier. But that four cents has come off of the Eversource bill. So Eversource is still gonna charge you $100,000 for the year for all the other stuff you've done. And because you're participating in the solar project, they're gonna subtract $45,000 from that 100,000. And you're only gonna pay us 88% of that. Does that answer? It, sound, it, it, it answers my question, but I don't quite understand the difference between what we're paying our third party person, who's, we're, I know what we're paying um, nine and a half cents, that's what our contract was, where Eversource was 10 and a half. Uh, but so you're saying- say, But the 45,000 that we get is, is, is off the first three charges. That's right. Instead right. of being over four charges. That's right. Adding so, in the supply. So, so um, okay. Um, so actually, I think getting the discount is okay because yep. the 45 is, 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 is a cap on the 40, the right. we're only gonna get 45. That's right. right. So we might as well okay. get it off the three charges instead of the fourth charge. Right. And, and, and get a little extra savings on that fourth the supply part. That's right. The only way we could affect your fourth charge is if we plugged directly into your buildings. So if we ran a line directly from our solar farm into your buildings. Right then we could affect that fourth charge uh, because your meter would run backwards. But using the net metering cap allocation that Massachusetts set up, you're able to get the benefits of a backward running meter without having to be plugged into the solar farm. Mm -hmm. It's a good system. Yeah. I'm a fan of how Massachusetts has done it, but and he hopefully does it they can keep any the incentives. Thing in front of him. Right. You just, it's in your head. Yes, yeah, smart guy, <laughs> very smart guy. I've been, I've been doing this a while. Have you? So, it's, well, it's a while. Thank yeah. you for explaining uh, it because Four years we, now. we were, um, <laughs> it's one of those things, I, I know you were frustrated, but we were frustrated too. We obviously wanted to start collecting. <laughs> right, yeah, uh, we, were, we were planning on so, turning this on in February. We yeah. were hoping. Yeah, I know. This would all so be we're like, in other states, it's uh, this long to get. So yeah, it's, in, it's in California, they are fantastic. And as soon as you can get the system complete, but they they, they're about a decade ahead everywhere else in the country. Right. Uh, and Massachusetts, as much as I like to complain about the utilities, I have to give them their credit in that uh, the state government uh, mismanaged the end of the SREC 2 era. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it caused a massive rush on all the developers to get their projects finished by January 9th. Yep. And so you had roughly a tenfold increase in the amount of work the utilities had to do. And mm -hmm. to be fair, they knew it's a tenfold increase that's an anomaly. So there's no reason to upscale their staffing right. because there isn't, it was they're just gonna have to policy. fire those people immediately afterwards. It was forced by policy instead that's of right. demand. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can understand why they didn't upstaff, but because they didn't, everything gets delayed. Yep. And so they've been rushing around like crazy, trying to do all the work, 
and they didn't have a real good business reason to upstaff. So I have some sympathy for them in this yeah, case. Yeah, makes sense. Minnesota, I have no sympathy for the utilities <laughs> in Minnesota, but in Massachusetts, I do. What I just passed out to, and I have an original here for you sign, of Great. Schedule Z, which tells us where the other, what are the other um, entities? I thought, that, and I the thought percentages. You, signed, you signed it. I did. Yeah. But I'm giving it to you for your information. Oh, So you okay. can see who else is All right. in, in, enjoying the town of Deerfield. <laughs> what other communities? I have oh, come boy. to love this drive up oh. from Springfield. Yeah. I've made it, we'll build another one. <laughs> I've, I've made it like Thanks. 25 times now. Um, we are interested in a solar field on our, our landfill. Yes, we are. We've okay. been trying to do that. Um, I... I Again, I don't know why we haven't been able to move forward on that. There's so. nobody to do it. <laughs> yeah, so we, um, we, that's on our list of things to go forward with as an RFP. And, and Marn and Leibovitz knows that we can okay. do Okay, great. That, so. I we'll, wish we'll, you guys had come out a year ago with it. Uh, SREC 3 is not going to be available for municipals. Yeah. So we won't be able to get all the, all the value that we got out of this one. So it will I, be a little more competitive. We're projecting forward. Do you have any? What about Esric 4? So yeah, we, we, we're we still in, the industry's in sort of a transition period trying to understand exactly how this is gonna work. Uh, and they're in a second rush to get a lot of projects mm -hmm. done by March 31st of next year. Uh, Cause there's the end of the Esric 2 holdover period, mm -hmm. our projects, and there's a tiered structure at the end of Esric mm -hmm. 2. So we will be working in a uh, reverse auction type mode going into the next incentive uh, process. And it's decided to focus away from municipals and municipal uh, investment. And I think it's a little bit frustrating that they did that. But again, SREC 2 and SREC 1 were so heavily focused on providing power to the towns that uh, community solar projects were completely ignored. Uh, SREC 2 and SREC 1 both incentivize community solar, but not enough to actually get anybody to build it. Uh, everybody just set up projects like the one we have, where the town benefits, but the, the real citizens of the town who don't maybe have houses that can get solar on their roof, or right. don't uh, have credit that would justify their own individual solar farms, they haven't been able to take advantage of it. So this new program, I think, is really structured towards uh, helping the individuals of communities take Let's advantage. Put in a way they do dip benefit because they pay less taxes. That's true. It is true. I, I do. I do wish we could work with more municipals and municipalities because uh, not everybody's an early adopter. There's some places that had uh, solar farms right away, and others had to see it take place and yeah. understand that it's. When I first started pitching these to people. The biggest question was, wh how are you ripping me off? Because <laughs> it, it seems too good to be true. It, right. uh, this really is kind of related, but not, it's off your subject. I just wanted you to know is that I'm, I sit on the planning board here in town, and this project almost didn't happen because of craziness. Our bylaws that we have, the way we run things in this town, um, I had, it was difficult to get this yeah. project forward. I'm glad even, you did. Even at this level. So. It's a good project. Martin and, it is. and Zach did a great job. He did, and it was his patience that really helped pull this through. Yeah. We, like I said, we've been trying to do something on our landfill, and it would be nice if we could do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we, um, um, just to def defray the cost of the wells alone. So. Right. It is, uh, they, they are really good projects, and the cost of solar farms are coming down dramatically. Uh, like I said, I started four years ago. Mm -hmm. When I started in the industry, uh, modules, just the glass that produces the power, cost $4 a watt. And now we're building full systems at $1.50 a watt. Wow. Just the cost has just precipitously fallen. So Mostly foreign made? Or, is it, or do, are you still finding uh, so any... USA nearly made. everything that's made. Uh, there's only one company that really manufactures in the United States, yep. and that's for solar. Yep. And almost everything they make get, gets installed in the southwest deserts for utilities. Yep. Uh, everything we, we buy, everything we make are made by foreign-made. Yep. Um, 
India and China are are just on fire with this. It's, yeah, I know. Uh, I they are could, going gangbusters, but w you know, our unfortunately, our administration is not focused there. We're looking at digging the ground for black yeah. coal instead of. I share your sentiment on that. Yeah, yeah. It drives me crazy. But, okay. Yep. Thank you. Well, thank you for thank coming. You. I appreciate, appreciate you having me. Thank have, you so have much. Have a nice yeah. evening, and I, thank you for driving all the way up. Yeah, thanks no for problem. your wealth of knowledge. I, you really have good. a great Greek place right on the main strip that I always take advantage of. Uh huh. So, good. Um, so if you need us to, to complain some more at some point, let us know. Anytime um, you want to complain to the utility, <laughs> I'll accept it. Anytime. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, now we're ready for um, the public hearing on the Deerfield Land change of, uh, for the liquor license. So come on up. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, welcome. Thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for being patient, waiting. Good evening. Okay. How are you? Good. Good, good. My name is Dan Rothschild. I'm an attorney with Bulky Richardson and Jolinas in Springfield. Right here you know what? Can I just interrupt yeah. you to change that around and repeat? Because I can tell yeah. there will be people saying, I can't hear you. I understood. <laughs> my, my wife is always complaining that I'm a mumbler and she can't <laughs> hear my lower register. So I certainly understand. Uh, and I am here with Debbie Kalman, who's the Director of Finance and Assistant Treasurer for Historic Deerfield and the Deerfield Inn. So we are here on a change of manager application for the alcoholic beverage license for the inn. And we'd be happy to answer any questions or address any concerns that you might have about our application. Um, I didn't have any questions. We've um, we've had an alcohol license for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing that I like to bring up is it's not required, but I certainly would ask that um, every server be TIPS trained. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through that program. And the, and the demonstration of that program, and I'm really convinced, I don't know, that was like years ago, but I'm really convinced that it makes a huge difference. Oh, um, no, I agree. And we have actually nine that are TIP certified on our wonderful. staff. So the innkeeper, um, the restaurant manager, the bartenders, and our team leads, which are sort of like our, our supervisors on the floor. So we always have at least one. Um, on staff at during every shift because it we take it the same way it's very yeah. it's just a very serious issue and right, right yep. as well no that's wonderful did you, either one of you have any questions i don't no okay uh, I would. Pat? Yes. yes are the premises the description of the premises everything staying exactly the same everything's exactly the same yes and the hours that you will be serving alcohol okay the hours that we'll be serving alcohol are noon until nine and that's sunday through thursday and then noon until 10 friday and saturday we close christmas eve christmas day and boxing day depending on which day of the week it falls Ten. Friday. 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 Right. I think I, I think those are the same hours that you've yeah. had. Yeah, we haven't changed. Yeah. Well, that's going to be on the form that you already gave them. Okay. So Did, I'll type that we, in after so you guys sign it. Okay. Can I make a motion? Yes. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I move to approve by amending the um, all alcohol restaurant on premises liquor license number zero zero. 009 HT 0276 held by Historic Deerfield Inc. Deerfield Inn 84B Old Main Street, Deerfield, Massachusetts. Um, the change of manager to uh, Deborah Coleman. I second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. Do you have anything to say? Did you have that slide? Is that the one? Okay. Yes. I'd just like to add as an aside, it's been a pleasure working with Pat. Oh, great. Oh, application. Good. She's been nice very to helpful you. to me. That's nice I to know. Enjoyed talking with her. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've, we've enjoyed the food and the alcohol beverages. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the food. <laughs> it's wonderful there. Thank you. It is. It is very much a, a neighborhood community-oriented. It's got a great feeling right it now. It does have a great feeling. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Great job. Thank you. Thanks Thank, so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming and waiting. 
Okay. Um, do, let's. Board of Health comments? Yes, I was just going to say, can we just go back to the Board of Health comments? Because I just want people to know that um, the risk level has, we did have a hit um, for West Nile disease. It's circulating throughout the valley. And so the Department of Public Health has raised the risk level um, for Deerfield and some surrounding communities uh, up and down the valley um, to moderate. And what that means is that it is more opportunities for human cases. As a matter of fact, there was a, the, uh, a human case today. So um, uh, in, in uh, gosh, I can't, it was in um, Middlesex County. There was a woman in her um, 70s. And um, so I just want to say that this is not a reason to panic. What this means is it's just, there is more opportunities. The chances are going to occur more than likely. But it still is 70 to 80 percent, nobody gets symptoms. You don't even know you're being bitten. The 20 percent that, ha that has some reaction, it's like a, you know, summer cold or, you know, it's really mild for the most part. It's like having a little bit of a flu. Then there's like the 1 percent or less than 1 percent consistently of really people over 50. So it's the older people that will react and, and, and be hospitalized. And that's where you get the human cases, because otherwise you don't go, so it's not reported. So people don't really know that they have West Nile disease for the most part, and so it's not reported. So when, they, when there is a case, a human case, that's that 1% that is actually going to the doctors and, and being hospitalized. And so um, when we raise the risk level, that means if you're an older person or very young, like a baby, so if grandmothers out there and mothers, you know, use mosquito netting on your um, baby buggies and, and play pens and make sure that your screens are fixed, things like that. And, and if you're elder, then just make sure your activity levels um, in the evening, because the mosquitoes that carry West Nile disease bite in the morning and the evening. So if you have activities in the evening um, at dusk or dawn, you're out walking your dog early in the morning, make sure you have long sleeves on or you use bug spray, you use DEET. DEET is on your skin. Perithium for ticks is on your clothes. That's why I come here, you know. So you get... I get away from the mosquitoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but seriously, if you, and, and, and these are the kind of mosquitoes, again, are container breeders. So it's your flower pots and your kid pools and your animal dishes. Those are the, where the mosquitoes are breeding. And, and our highway crew has done a wonderful job. We've had continuous rain all, all summer here. And they um, treated the catch basins. They'll be treating them again in the next couple weeks. And those, that's where the mosquitoes breed. So yes, there is a huge, huge increase in the amount of mosquitoes since last year, you know, thousand percent increase in some cases. But it's only because last year was a drought. Mm -hmm. So the, our data is screwed, um, skewed, not screwed, skewed, <laughs> excuse me, on, um, from last year. And so we don't, we don't have a true reading of what would be normal. So but just so you know that all of this has been on all four networks as well. I know, so. I know. Okay. I, I'm terrible. But no, anyway, okay. um, and <laughs> it's an accident. Um, so just be, be really um, cognizant and cautious. And that doesn't mean that ticks have gone away. Ticks are just as bad. Make sure you're cleaning up on your, from your bird seed. Make sure you um, are cleaning up um, your, your yards. Um, because it's rodents that, that really carry the ticks into your yards. And we've had some issues with rodents, and we've had bear issues. So make sure that there are, are your chicken feeds being cleaned up, your bird seeds being cleaned up, and use perithium on your clothes. D on your skin. Moving on? Yes, uh, sorry. This is not really Board of Health comment, but since that was just here, I, I just wanted to make this point that I brought up. 
briefly about the solar field and the problem that we had. The, at the time when they wanted to do this project, the planning board had this miscued fee. They wanted to charge these people a $120,000 fee for what they called disturbed land. They, the people said they can't afford that. They weren't going to do it. And they said, well, everybody's going to do it. We ended up changing this to what was appropriate. We ended up charging them $3,200 instead of the $120,000, which will re result in a $1.4 million gain for the town over the next 20 years. So it's not always in taxes. this. Taxes. In, in mm -hmm. taxes. So it's not always this right. big fee that you can't substantiate that is a benefit to the community. Okay, I'm done. All right. Next. All right. You, did you want to say anything? No? Okay. Um, Wendy, the town minister's report. Oh, just, it's all out here. I, I can okay. talk about many things, <laughs> but I, um, I, I actually wanted, um, we, I started out uh, at the, um, this evening at the um, CIPC meeting, which mm -hmm. Carolyn was at, and I, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about any thing there. Um, well, we have the schedule. We're going to get the schedule out. Um, with a slight change. Schedule um, for, to, for to budget. The request, uh, yeah, that okay. requests have to come in. Okay. Um, we're going to um, look at the North uh, Borough priority um, matrix and try to um, come up with one that fits Deerfield that's similar to, to North Borough because it's a really good model. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, yep. and um, our next meeting is September, um, I believe it's September 6th, first Wednesday, yes. Uh, the full, full moon on September 6th is our next meeting. So. That's our next meeting? Yeah. Oh. Well, no, no that's the next CIPC, CIPC meeting. Oh, okay. CIPC meeting. Um, and I, I'd gone to it briefly just to say about, talk about the compactor that we've talked about. Yep. Um, moving on to the schedule, and then so I'll talk yeah, we have to get that Kevin forward. to put in, put it, put in for that. Um, and yeah. um, a desire to return to having a um, an accounts specifically for technology, which we had for yeah. many years and okay. kind of fell away and got subsumed into another one. But keep it separate and actually have a technology sort of a mini technology um, capital plan as well. That's right. It's not There's quite capital, but it is a. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot that needs to happen. It needs it needs to be Stay organized. On top of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we should be able to have that priority thing sorted out but in the month of September. That was our goal anyway. Okay. Um, we did not elect a chair. No one stepped forward. So for that. We put it off a capital for Yes, yeah, so we put yeah. it off for another month. I Can um I just have so much going on. I just couldn't volunteer anymore. Well, I you know, at our last meeting we did some appointments, and, and, and I should have asked questions, but it, it kind of just blindsided me. And, and I, we had a change on that committee. And it, why, I, I guess I want, don't understand why we appoint new people and, to, and kick other people off instead of just filling it vacancies. Us. It wasn't us. It was the moderator. Yeah, moderator board. chooses. Um, it, it, and it's the planning okay. board. It, all we do is appoint what other committees pick pick okay mm -hmm. all right so um that i mean unfortunately we're, we're we're making that decision next month so the board the select board has some appointments the moderator some points for cipc right and, and, and i guess board, i understood the that. board okay the boards have the, you sure. know like assessors make the okay. choice planning board makes the choice okay um so i'll make a quick comment um i just as I was thinking, I met with um, with Jessica from FERCOG today about okay. our DTLA. Yeah. Have that right, DTLA? It's DLTA, but you know DLT. what? We should stop referring it to that because it means nothing to anyone. It really doesn't. <laughs> our, yeah. our, our, so our we have a grant. To Center of our South Deerfield Project. Center of project. South Deerfield Project right. to um, start inventorying uh, the properties and see what's available for economic development. And um, so she, she had done a lot of great groundwork to start. She has toured the town. She's put a map together on all the properties in the center vicinity and kind of categorized them based on zoning, what's available for open lots, what's open. There's really, believe it or not, not a lot of property that's available there to be developed. 
Um, mm -hmm. There's maybe eight, and some of those are town things, so there's maybe down to five. There are some good areas that we could focus on, and then there's other ways that we can improve town. So we're, we're, uh, she's beginning, we're all beginning the, this, uh, the start of this to start uh, holding interviews with prominent people in town that may have impact on this, and then we'll hold a, we'll hold a meeting uh, forum to invite the public to come and different stakeholders business owners in town to start looking forward to how, how we can start developing economic development here. Um, I'm, I sit on the EADS and the SEEDS, which is the economic Right. Job. I asked her about that tonight. And um, she's she's really nice. She's wonderful. With. Yeah. She's yeah. done and some good work already. I, I, she's been, she is willing to work down here. Oh, so I absolutely. appreciate you following up. Yeah. No, Kyle Scott and I joined her in the walk around a few days ago, and it, just for our own benefit to have that familiarity, and his is the, you know, taking on more and more as the building commissioner. So it was very useful. And, you know, just to go back and see, oh, there's businesses back here and back right. here and back here. So it's very interesting. It's um, amazing how many are, are here. So, there's and then quite a few. A couple days ago I went to the required complete streets, uh, now required um, 101, I think it's called, in order to move along in that process. So you might have read in the newspaper, Sunderland has gotten funding. They've gone through all the steps to, to get funding. Um, anyway, the complete streets process that the town went through five, four or five years ago was funded through the major HUD grant that FERCA got. It's not, it, it's useful, but it's a different program mm -hmm. yes, than no. this new MassDOT program. So it's not that new. But at any rate, if we get, put all our ducks in order, there may be funding for things such as sidewalks, which anyone who walks downtown yes. will see that's a great need. It is great. And need. it's come to us so, through so many places, you know, the seniors yep. and all of that. And it wouldn't just necessarily be, well, we have to find this out, whether we could do some work on sidewalk work on North Main, or is that a state? I keep hearing it's a state road. No. No, it's south. It's, it's just Sugar it turns Street. right here. Sugarloaf Street is is the, the state road. The state. Okay. North Main is ours. And then our road right out okay. here. Okay. All right. Yep. So we could. So yeah. we can. So. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting. A lot going um, on. A lot going on. Yep. Wendy, do you want to just um, say a little bit about meeting with Jim McGovern? I don't. You know. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. So Huge we were we were invited by uh, Congressman McGovern's, McGovern's office. He invited municipal officials, I guess, in a portion of his district, and um, Trevor, Carolyn, and I attended that meeting in, in Montague and Turner's Falls. There were only about five towns represented, yeah. multiple representatives, but we talked about what the issues were, <coughs> and um, I brought up wastewater treatment, and yeah. uh, he and his staff talked about bringing out um, um, EPA and, you know, the the state and federal if, uh, uh, government representatives who could talk with about funding needs because it isn't just obviously it's just our community. Right. So that you know was brought up. Um, Carolyn, why don't you speak to the issues and concerns that you raised? Um, well, I just wanted to make sure that he was aware of the farm bill. Mm -hmm. um, quite a few. I mean, there's about $14 million that's here in the Valley that comes in through to our farmers, but um, what is really important is the emergency watershed protection money that is a program that we access because you don't need declared events, and we've used it over the years, many, probably to the tune of three or four million dollars that we've collected since I've been involved, since 2005, really, if you add up all the projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's significant impact on us and what we don't have to pay um, our tax dollars to like repair um, along Mill Village Road mm -hmm. and different washouts and stuff like that and culverts that um, are blown out. So it's significant and um, it, it, I'm not sure if there's going to be a farm bill I done know. in time. but. Yes. It's okay because it, it has a continuing resolution similar to the federal budget. So until a farm bill, it's it's renewed every five years, and this will be the third farm bill I've worked on, I'm, and that's what I'm meeting, going to the Northeast meeting to on um, Saturday, th Monday and uh, through Wednesday, is um, we met as a group in New England um, and decided that 
the big thing that we want to push in the Farm Bill is the definition for go from um, non-governmental agencies to non-federal government agencies mm -hmm. would be el eligible. So we can try to get money for um, forest planned for our um, town forest and wildlife um, habitat money and all that kind of stuff. So um, New England group that we've been organized for the years that I've been involved because um, we're all we we are a very small group and we're not funded we're all volunteers so um, as a group we have a lot of legislators um, mm -hmm. in Congress so what we do is um, we agree what we want and then we go to the Northeast meeting which is you know includes West Virginia up and um, then they vote hopefully what we would like as important for New England and then we negotiate with the Western communities and um, Colorado and Texas are, are the um, states that I've interacted with already and they seem to be very supportive of this language change which will mean substantially more programs that we can participate as a town water districts we don't have to do all this hokey stuff like we do, are doing in the Buckland and Shelburne areas which um, you know the land trust the Franklin land trust were turning over the or the water districts up there are turning over the property for for the duration of the project of the restoration work along um, the North River um, as a non-governmental group that's holding the property and DEP had to sign off on it. It's all convoluted just so that they could participate in the program because it's like a million dollar fix up there for that, yeah. protecting their wells. And so that's the kind of thing that we would do if something happened um, in the water district like Old Deerfield. Can I ask a question? Along Old Deerfield River. Um, Kevin mentioned that he's going to the MEMA um, hazard mitigation program. Um, would that grant help with some of the? Absolutely. Okay. We um, had to turn back um, a $760,000 grant because our um, hazardous mitigation plan was in the line, pipeline at FEMA to be approved and it didn't so is this for, pl I thought this was for grants, the hazardous mitigation yes. program grant. But, but you have the requirement for mm -hmm. the grant is that you have, have to have an approved place. FEMA. Yes, approved. and that happened when I was here before. Yes. It's all approved. That was and, five and year, four years ago. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we, we had sent our paperwork in. It got approved and updated from MEMA. But then um, MEMA. MEMA, after MEMA stamps it, they send it to FEMA. Yeah. And it's, I remember it was, that. It was in two years. In the, in the pipeline to, to get approved because everybody had to have that as a requirement. So they didn't hire additional staff or Are we, change the requirement. Do we have an approved one now? Yes. Okay, we, so we're eligible. Less, to... as last summer. Okay, so, so now we're eligible. And it's good for three more years and then we have to update it again. Right. But we, we actually, that was what our MVP grant is to do, is there's a new requirement. Mm -hmm. So we are, are, we are getting the grant to fund that ten thousand dollars is to update the new requirement and add it on. Right. And that extends our um, hazardous mitigation plan for another year. Excellent. On top of the year that we already have, and then we're current for all the requirements. That grant, um, from what I understand, they're going to be training the MVP facilitators in September, so they'll roll it out later September, October. Um, I'm just not really worried about it. Well do it mm -hmm. just to do it it's unfortunately um, there's so many things you have to jump through the hoops to get money and I mean people just don't realize this no, some I, of it is just ridiculous but I realize it <laughs> I, know. I said it you know for hours in a meeting saying oh my goodness <laughs> I know I'm, I don't mean to belittle but it, you know you just this it's it's all this stuff, but it's the only way that you stay ahead. And I'm hoping, now that we're fully staffed, that we can have you take more advantage of grants and stuff. And because that's the only way we get ahead. You know, it's, we, we, we're not, we don't get ahead treading water, which is what we've been doing for mm -hmm. a while here. So I'm so glad you're on board, and we now have staff. That yep. You can have free tomorrow. Tomorrow's time key up. is beginning. And I know. Looking forward to it. Poster contest. Oh, poster contest. Do you want to talk about that? I have no idea what it is. Wendy? Oh, oh it's in your mail file. I, um, I think I've, I've it's right here. Um, yeah, the, the MMA, MMA uh, they've been doing these oh. contests every year, and they just want your endorsement. And it's um, where they encourage the third graders to do a poster contest, and the 
um, eighth graders to do an essay contest around. And you can read that at the top of the um, page there. If, the if I were elected leader of my community, I would make a difference by, and then um, it's an essay contest for eighth graders, and it's a poster contest for third graders. And they would like to invite the students in your community to participate in this year's essay and poster contest. Um, oh, man. They're sending a letter to each yeah, town. Yeah, so they just want our, your endorsement of this, and, essentially. Um, they want us to publicize it. So um, if you want to support it. it. Yes. I do. Um, what I'd like to do is um, see if um, we could pass this on to the school. Sure. Well, actually, they the will. MMA takes care of they that. They do all that. Oh, they do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll just, if you want to um, encourage this effort, I'll fill out the paperwork and they'll take care of it. it. I would Thank absolutely you. love to encourage it. With the new principal. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, maybe we can coordinate some kind of a little event with like third grade. I don't know if be fun. Uh, the schools are so constrained by the MCAS test. I'm, I don't want to impose, uh, but impose maybe we, on maybe the eighth can, graders, uh, but we can reach out and find out. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but certainly for the little kids, like the third graders, yeah. it seems like we should we be could, able to do something. We could you know, so we could do something. Go and visit. Yep. And announce it and say what it's like to be a yeah. Let's 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 try to let's try to talk Love that. this up and Love it. Try to participate something. Sure. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I do. Have That's a good idea. Just a couple of things. You have the um, schedule for the yep. for the FERCOG um, municipal officials workshops coming up. There mm -hmm. is one on marijuana legalization. I also um, got a memo from council today because everyone's trying to sort through what happened. Um, um, do you think it's really worth spending the time yet? on it because they haven't yes. really sorted well this is not till um september, september 7th. 7th no but i meant do you think they've honestly um they have sorted out enough do you think they have yeah yeah I, they're they've appointing the statewide it's no longer under dph it's basically a whole change now from what path we've been on with um medicinal marijuana yeah so um we'll no. Well, the, I'll keep on top of that and inform you as I have more information. It may also be the topic of the regional Franklin County. What are, I'm sorry, what are you looking for? Oh, I was just looking for the um, local officials thing. I, I think I it's in your mail folder. Oh. In blue one, maybe. Um, oh, you know what? I bet. I didn't even check. I'm sorry. And also, I just do want to mention that um, we got, it right got a, a small sorry. mini grant from um, our health trust and I'll talk about the other meeting in the health trust um, $600 for to continue our wellness activities here and uh, thank you to the uh, woman who runs the wellness program yeah and to um, our team here that's on the wellness committee and Lisa white who who put the grant together wonderful so that's for that's yes ladies. thank you very I, much I also attended the health trust meeting the quarterly meeting of the trust that happens here mm -hmm. and that was when they had the vote um, whether to go forward with the 32B2123 that you voted to do to open up. It was, it was not a smooth process, but they did, uh, with the weighted voting, end up getting a yay to go forward and made, awaiting more direction. A lot of um, member units do not wish to go forward, um, and I'm not sure how that, how that impacts um, the trust overall. But... Mm -hmm. um, they also talked about um, shifting the re annual enrollment to a July 1st from an April, which I guess we've been doing for a while. I didn't realize that, but we were still April. <laughs> um, to save, it would be, uh, be a lot easier for the trust to do so. Anyway, we'll get more direction from okay. them about that. Um, just looking at these, I, I guess we need to commit, or should, we should commit to coming, going to most I'm of I'm gonna these. go to the first one. Yeah. And the, oh, that's what I was mentioning. The, yeah, uh, I registered. You have to register. I did register for that one. The, the, the Franklin marijuana. County mm -hmm. Selectman Association next meeting was going to be the, we're working on the 28th of September, and the topic was going to change to marijuana. We don't have a venue at the moment. We're working on that. We're going to invite Hampshire and Franklin together with multiple speakers. Phoebe being one of them, um, that's still kind of in discussion at the moment. So, okay, and so with this coming up now, I'm not, sh you know, I've got to talk to John Edwards again. The, the issue is we don't have a venue for that many people. 
yeah. uh, Post Club was booked. Um, there was any, anywhere we could think of just wasn't working out at the moment. Okay. You know, Waitley Inn might be too large, but we'll, we'll see where that goes. So, you, so the next Selectman's Association was September 28th? Yes. Okay. Um, would you, would you let me know if, um, cause I already got two meetings that week. On the 7th? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I have Tuesday, go, Wednesday, and, and Thursday. So if you were going to go. I'm going to. Um, if we were going to have that on the 28th, right, then, then it would be kind of a repeat. It, it would. And that's, as Wendy mentioned, it, you know, with this happening, is that the right time? And, yeah. and that was kind of the, the originally the topic was uh, something else, but then we were thinking of moving it around. That was at the last e-board meeting. Okay. But um, it was still kind of up in the air about, about getting a venue. But we thought this topic was very important, and yeah, we, we were trying to get it. a chief. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe have chief come and. Yeah, because um, I mean, one of the biggest questions I have, you know, when you, you do a breathalyzer test for alcohol, so you absolutely know if someone is, you know, well, well marijuana it. stays in the system for thirty days or more. So yeah, and there's a you, lot of issues. Yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you regulate? you know, enforcement and stuff, law enforcement. With employment. You yeah. Know. And yeah. certainly you're going to have people contesting it. So, you know, how do we protect our officers? Mm -hmm. do, you know. Sure. From, yeah, um, there's a lot, there's a lot yeah. to worry about. Yeah. So anyway, um, so that's good. Um, I, I, is there a way that we can, on this Rural Policy Commission recommendations and next steps, can, Wendy, can we work on that between now and the November date on that? What do you mean work on? Um, come up with what co some of the things that um, are concerning to us. I mean, we have we have multiple committees, but one of the you know that's one of those small um, small town mm -hmm. issues is education. There are a lot fun, of different fun, people that are working on this. And a lot of a lot of issues for us are. Um, the regulations that are coming out of Boston and the way they're financing stuff, it's almost like they're squeezing the communities out of existence. You know, it's more and more, as you know, stuff that we have to do as if we're big cities. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it drives you crazy. I mean, you're trying to keep up all the time. And so I, to make that more useful, and I mean, Linda Dunlevely is our, supposed to be our representative. And so to me, you need to go and not be told what our issues are. Mm -hmm. We need to tell her what the issues mm -hmm. are. And if we work on it and come with a slate, who's ever there, I'm sure we could get to support mm -hmm. us. Or maybe we can, you know. Well, this is in November. This the is, they're giving us like the schedule for the fall. Right. And I think, and I hope, and expect that they will be communicating with us before then to do exactly that to really. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought as we could a get a you know, cluster. I mean, because I've had some concerns about. Some of the mm -hmm. I did objectives. clarify that issue with the economic areas. Remember that? Yes. At, with Jessica, who did that, and she said that was simply a talking point, that it didn't designate us in any way. It was a way to sort of illustrate. Well, because, see, that was one of my things. Yeah. It's like, here she's going. Nobody knows she, what we're talking about. So and, and <laughs> we should be more clear. No, uh, yeah. We were not designated as an economic area, our downtown. And that means that we would automatically not be eligible for funding for different grants and stuff like that. Well, not, and then when I brought it up to Jessica Atwood, who we met with earlier to say, she explained to me that that was done uh -huh. just sort of at last minute for the um, first meeting of this group to sort of describe how to start looking. But it, we're not nailed to any, it's not, you know, pinning us in any place I know, or but anything. The fact is that when you're overlooked, and you don't make a stink about it, mm -hmm. then you will be continually overlooked, and then you're out out when it comes to funding. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that we are in there, and that's the kind of thing I right. wanted. Well, I think in this situation, the more overlooked, the better, because the point is is to <laughs> give rural entities, um, a, you know, sort of bring our sorry tale forward and saying, hey, you know, we need to address these issues because. You know, the, the money, the focus, the legislation, the regulations are all geared um, to larger, much larger communities. And yet we all have to abide by the same things. And, you know, I asked at the end of the Complete Streets session, and by the way, it was held and anyone across the state could come, and there were people from the other end of the state um, and consultants and bike 
groups because it's it's the complete streets are really very much driven by bicyclists who mm -hmm. want to see bike lanes and I'm. I'm for that. I'm mm -hmm. a bicyclist. We've got one. Um, so um, I said at the very end, I said, so is there just a one-size-fits-all? I'm going to say that at all the meetings now. And there is. So that was the answer. So um, yeah, I, I'll follow this because I share your concern about um, you know what I'm talking being about. represented, having yeah. a, having. I, I, we need to generate this stuff, I think. All right. So, and we talk about it, um, you know, off. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, before Jessica left tonight, I said, you know, do you, does the FERCOG have like an advisory board of like the town administrators who day in, day out work with these challenges? And so that would be a good idea because the, I think a lot of the people, and now I'm an alternate to you, Carolyn, on the executive committee, but it's kind of a process driven rather than, than day to day activity mm -hmm. driven thing. So. We'll see. You, you know what I mean. Yep, I so do. So that's good. We're on the same page. Sorry for talking so much. No, <laughs> no. We can get Tavern more. Sports Park. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, license. Okay. So I believe this is the first time that um, there has been a Kino license uh, being applied for by an entity in town. And you have a right to, it, it's controlled by the Mass Lottery Commission, got a letter from them. You have a right to have a public hearing on this if you would like, um, uh, or just let it go by. You don't have to do anything. I don't have an issue with it. I did check with the chief. He doesn't have an issue. I just I I brought it to your attention because you mm. you need to know, and I've had experiences in other communities that did have a concern about it. Um, uh, well, Long Meadow, actually, it was Long well, Meadow was many there? years ago. Um, it attracts a lot of uh, constant kind of traffic. Uh, people who um, it's a, you know how it works. No, There's a television, right. a little oh, screen no. in a corner, and they run games all day long. And, and you, could, you just it's kind of like a, a five-minute Powerball, oh. sort of like. And the numbers change, and, and if play. you pick your number, it's like a, you it's win. A, it's like a gambling oh, parlor. You can, you can <laughs> play it while you're, yeah. you know, having a drink or meeting I with people or whatever. I guess I just never. <laughs> I never have time for those I kind never of have things. The money, so he didn't. The chief didn't have a concern, okay. and you know, I, I that, that's basically. I don't, I, I don't either. Okay. So with no action is. Um, unless we get a complaint, I um, feel it's probably exactly. And Pat raised that issue. Yep. You know, uh, wasn't it you? So yeah, certainly, if we know where to go, if yeah, that's a problem. Yep. great. Okay. You a land lease? Do you need us okay. to vote on that, or no? no. Just well, like I think okay. inaction is the action. <laughs> Amendment and renewal of the land lease with the New England Public Radio. Okay, so you've had this lease with them for uh, I don't know how many years, seven, since eight years now. Last, I think, since oh. 2010, right? You said. Yes, I'm sorry. That's correct. That's right in the motion. So um, this is just. Um, an amendment to it and an extension of it. The amendment. Um, this is, I all we have is the motion. Is that the idea? Why? Okay, so how long do we amend it? Because it just says amend and extend the land lease stated with Miller for the property and private for um, how long? This says. Well, but I, I take this as, as a reduction in it, the fee. And they're and amending. It is, and it's, a, it's kind of complicated about how. Um, is there any paperwork? It on wasn't that? the fee. There was a, a, a pro bono. Um, well, it says the lease shall be amended by removing the term fifteen hundred dollars in section two B, two, and replacing it with the term five hundred dollars. So it looks like the, the lease payment is going to go down by a thousand dollars. And I don't know if that's. It wasn't. Monthly. It wasn't um, a, a dollar necessarily amount. There was some mo monetary amount that it was a value What's that the was attached. Between money and monetary. Um, it was um, there was a there's money that we get, but yeah. then some of it was services, and huh. it's it's kind of complicated how it was um, initially hmm. negotiated, and this makes us legally correct. Let me just put it that way. Um, I, Lisa reviewed this. She gave me the background of how this started um, back in 2010, and um, we didn't go through a procurement process back then. Supposedly, if we had, it, it would have been different. This is a nonprofit, you know, public radio station. Um, I don't, I don't know all the detail. I know is that this is the best we could do without having to go out to bid again for the 
little tiny space that space that they're for their tower. Yep. And where is um, their tower? Pine Nook Road. So I, I don't. Yeah, I remember. So do you? It's, so they neglected. It's actually uh, on the tower. Right. It's on the tower. Yeah, it's just a little tiny spot. Right. Okay. So previously, are you saying that we don't get the fifteen hundred dollars currently? No, we do. What is it that we get actually? I'm we, not sure. Oh wait. I don't remember. I'll tell you. I have it right yeah. here. No, never. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, they supposedly. Do you get turnovers? Because I don't remember. We get some kind of access, don't we? Yeah, well, they get, the, they get they, No, no, we get access we get, on the radio. Right. Can. And that, um, right. we had to correct that with this, yes, okay? There was an issue with that. That's why the language is such. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. $500. And the value of the um, access is the on air program underwriting announcement $1,500 per year. So we are getting, continuing to get our $500. And bef so but we're not getting the. We never have been getting the $1,500? It was no, $1,500 of value access. of access. Yeah. And now it's $500 of. Right, and that was kind access. of a nod. Of and Lisa looked at that lease and looked at this. Yes, and said it was yes, I had her go through it. And so we have to just change. What happened is they contacted they us. They had dropped the ball. Us. They're under our lease agreement. They're supposed to let us know by I think May at the end of the yeah. Whatever the it says term they is. neglected to. Right, right. So. Um, Why are you reading? You said neglected. The first, whereas the oh. lease neglected to advise the leaseor of its intent I was, I was to extend the lease pursuant. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I, I agree. I don't know why that page um, is down there. I'm, I'm um, trying to understand. Well, I think, I think we used to get a certain amount, and now we get. No, no, no. We never got more than 500 bucks, but what we got was supposedly value of right. excess. I got gotcha. you. And you can't. You can't do that legally. You can't. Well, it, yeah, it goes way back. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to do that. But that doesn't mean we can't ask for, you know, we just can't have it in the contract. Okay. It's, it's when we renew it in a few years and we're promoting the anniversary, the town's anniversary, we'll, we'll bring that up. Yep. Then we'll <laughs> ask good. them to run stuff. Okay. You have to have something specific. I never heard right. of the public. Where does the public? It's WFCR. Wow. Where do they broadcast out of? Well, uh, their office, they used to be on UMass for 30, 40 years, and they're oh. in Springfield. Huh. 88.5. You don't watch NPR? I mean, listen to NPR? You don't listen, okay. I've heard of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, you have. National yes, Public yes. Radio. NPR? I cannot believe you have not listened to NPR. 88.5? Really? Nope. On the cigar, radio you've, got, go that low. you've got to go no. turn it on because they have good stuff. You learn something. I'm well, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Every time I listen to something on the radio, it got me in trouble. I don't know. I'll make, I'll make a motion. It's the low end of the dial. Oh. It is. It's not right. Non commercial <laughs> radio is in the below, <laughs> below 92 or something like that. I know he so has. No 88.5. He's pulling our leg. Oh, um, good. <laughs> he is. He's pulling our leg. Um, I make a motion that we. Um, oh wait, let's. You got it right here. I'm sorry, Wendy. I move to amend and extend the land lease dated August 11, 2010, with the New England Public Radio Foundation Inc. for the property on Pine Nook Road. Um, and what? How? When? How? You don't have to when we extend it. They're just looking for a year, or it must be five years. I think it's yeah. Isn't it a five-year it, one? It's a renewing. Um, Whatever the original was. I five year. Five, five years. Initial is five years. Um, so it'd be 2022. Um, yeah. Oh, we can. Two, 2023 is our our. Okay. Renew. So when we go to renew, we're gonna put that in our notes for the committee. Pack. The agreement shall be extended for three additional five year terms, so long as the lessee is not in default of any term hereunder. So it's. Um, I, I want to just do one five-year term so that we can. But this is in default anyway, so you said in the neglect to advise. Because I, I want us to put this as part of the committee mission to get this on NPR, our birthday. NPR. 2023. 
birthday party Deerfield. for the town of Deerfield on NPR. And they have to do X number of little books, Vin yes, info, info facts on the town of Deerfield and how wonderful we are. And that we're going <laughs> to negotiate that. I cannot believe it. He's I know you're, uh, you are. As soon are. as I play it for him after the are. meeting, it will Classical yeah. music. I don't listen to classical music. How can you not listen Jazz to classical music? Jazz Alamode? I, you don't vacuum music? to classical music? Come on. Jazz Alamode? I never touch my wife's vehicle. Vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. She'll get charged so we're, that. So we're only, we're doing it for five years. Is that okay? Can we do it for five years? Because uh, you mean put that language in? Yes, because um, well, it's already in. This is an amendment to it. You're not yes, changing. Yes, but I, it. I, I didn't want to um, do, do three, three five-year five terms. I only wanted to do one five-year term. Um, because then at the five-year term, we're going right, to negotiate so let's, for our birthday party. Let's no, we do could this. Do that anyways. Yeah. So you just let's let's just do this. No, because if we sign off, then it. It gets, never gets up again. Well, you'll remember. You listen to the classical music, and it'll remind you to call up and say, "Look at <laughs> well, okay. our birthday." Um, he's signing it. Uh, we're signing it. We'll. I'll talk to him. I'll say, "Look." Yeah. Well, okay. I'll come we'll back sign. with you. Come back to you. With I second the motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're, is this the one that you want signed, or do you have the official one? That, no, it's just all the same. You can sign that. Okay. Um, yeah, we. we it would be great. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make a decision for the committee, but it would be great if we had little things um, about interesting facts about Deerfield and our party coming up and all kinds of stuff in 2022 yep. for 2023. Okay? I'm with you. And we'll yep. make sure that gets into the committee notes. We don't have a committee yet, but we have at least one volunteer. And... Um, we're putting that together in the next few months, okay? Thank you. Pat? Who's the volunteer? Um, who is that gentleman that came in? I'm volunteering. He, we have his name. He, yeah. he, yeah. Oh, he came in and he talked to us. This is before Wendy's time, so you better have it written down somewhere because I have a mind like a sieve. I wrote it down somewhere. Don't worry. I just have to find the piece of paper that it's written on. <laughs> However, if he's that person all about the has, history, but he's been quiet. <laughs> <laughs> if that person remembers who they are, who talked about that, is he paying night, rent? By awful. the way, I just want to know: is he paying rent? He's been there a long time. Okay, we're getting crazy here. <laughs> he's um, our security force, actually. Right. We need to do the assessors. Yes. Um, oh, yes. The big contract. thing. Contract. That's a big thing. This was a um, big thing. Can I motion. I'm okay. I have a motion. Okay. Um, I, I move. Uh, I move to award the contract for fiscal year. 2022 quint quinquennial. Quinquennial, quinquennial certification and, uh, and years. fiscal years 2018 through 2021 interim valuation adjustment services per recommendation of the Board of Assessors and the Chief Procurement Officer to Patriot Properties for the contract price of $95,000. I'll second the motion. It was recommended by the um, assessors, so mm -hmm. if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Wendy, for and getting that RFP out and making yeah, it be successful. Yeah, a lot of work. Thank you very much. That was a tremendous That was worth $95,000, by the way, <laughs> putting out the RFP. <laughs> I just need your signature. We can do that at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, we have some appointments. Mm -hmm. um, I guess before we make the appointments, um, I would just – like to acknowledge um, that we have a, a resignation from Ron Bahanowitz from the zoning board. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to read that. Yes, please. It says, please accept my resignation from the zoning board of appeals effective immediately. It was with great regret and a sad heart that I must resign due to my ongoing serious medical condition. My uncle Stanley um, Bahanowitz was on the zoning board for 30 years or more. And I joined the board and worked alongside him until his death, and I have remained on the board since that time. We both were very passionate about the important work of the Zoning Board of Appeals and um, does what the work the Zoning Board of Appeals does to maintain the character of Deerfield. This will be the first time in over 50 years that a Bahanowitz will not be on the board. I want to thank everyone involved for all their support over the years, and I hope the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals um, continue to uphold our zoning bylaws for the good of the entire town. Sincerely, Ron Bahanowitz. 
Um, I'd just like to say um, thank you so very much to mm. um, Ron. F and um, I actually, m in 1980, my first town post was um, alternate to ZBA and with um, Stanley Bohanowitz. Oh, yeah? VA, can you believe that? Wow. 1980. So, anyway. They've been on for a long time. They've, you know, dedicated so much yep. to the town and, um, I know. and shaped it, a lot of it. So, um, anyway, I would just want to say thank you very much. And we do have um, a signed um, little proclamation. Proclamation that... Um, yep. Can we Trevor, read? We, yeah, would you like to read? Yes. Or, this Kip, one. you want to read? Either one. Okay. You want to read it, Trevor? Oh, well, you yeah, want to so, No, that's right. No, go ahead. No, no, I, no, no, no. you take it. I would just, I just, you know, I go ahead. I think you were hesitating. You <laughs> no, I was looking at it because we signed it. I don't want to take his way. <laughs> okay. Commendation. Recognizing and uh, commendating Ronald Bahanowitz for his service to the citizens of Deerfield. Whereas Ronald Bahanowitz has capably held the position on our Zoning Board of Appeals since 1988, overlapping with his uncle Stanley Bahanowitz, who served on the Zoning Board of Appeals for three decades or more. Whereas Ronald Bahanowitz has given selflessly of his time to promote and protect the interests and well-being of the citizens of Deerfield, and whereas Ronald Bahanowitz is deserving at this time of special recognition and commendation. Now, therefore, the Deerfield Select Board recognize and commend Ronald Bahanowitz for his unfailing commitment to the betterment of our community and his fellow citizens for these past many years, and we wish him and his wife the best in the future, given this uh, ninth day of August 2017. Just Sorry. want to say thank you so very much again. I really appreciate it, and we are all hoping that you are successful. It's an inspiration yep. to people to come out and serve their town. Yep. Um, so uh, we have some appointments to make. Um, we have the bylaws review advisory committee. Um, Oops. And the committee charge. Committee charge is to review the bylaws. Yes. <laughs> I was working one. I said, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yes. I, I'll, I'll, straightforward. If you want to do that, then I'll. I'll fill okay. you in some more on this. Okay. Um, so we have Judith Crundell, who is um, volunteered, and Bruce St. Peter's, and Wendy so, um, and Barbara Hancock will be ex officio. So uh, were we trying to get one more additional person? Um, one or two more, possibly. Um, and uh, we met twice already in the course of five days because uh, the, two mem the two prospective members were going off on alternating vacations that took up the whole month of August. So um, they would like to get a few more members to, to share the, the work. Mm. Um, primarily, they're going to be looking at the non-zoning, non-personnel, personnel boards already working on the personnel yep. policy. Um, and we had two very, very useful meetings. And we had, um, I'll let you finish the, this. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll read this. I'll, Do you want me to read this? Okay, so I move to appoint Judith uh, Kundal and Bruce St. Peter's to the Bylaws Review Advisory Committee and Barbara Hancock and Wendy Foxman as ex officio members. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I just really wanted to kick off the committee to get this has never been done. We, I know. It's something that towns do kind of routinely or every so often many towns have permanent committees that stay up to date and you know m do this work it's not never been done here and there's so much that needs updating and the big task. getting rid of actually so, one of the things that came up in the capital improvement committee meeting tonight was um we were wondering if this committee could um, look at the capital improvement bylaws just to make sure that the changes and Right. that reads succinctly and makes sense? Yeah. Um, I think that what they want to do is find those that don't and send it to those committees, if that's what it is, to have them say, what do you want to do? You know, and then we can shape mm -hmm. it up. That's a perfect one, because I'd like to see that change. It's very cumbersome with, uh, and tricky, and it's tricked up the town in, in its language. Um, so we met twice. The first time we had um, a representative from our code company come out and 
explained all the things we can do with the with the online code that it's we've amazing. got. Um, really that quite amazing, really and we didn't, you know, Barbara is, um, will be the primary person. I just wanted to sort of kick this off, um, but um, we're going to try to make it more useful to the public and understandable mm -hmm. to the public. Um, so that was very exciting. We're going, wow, wow, wow. So not a, one of the things we can do through our, our uh, contract with them is on our own code book that's on the, our website. Um, well, first of all, you can download it as an e-code app, but um, we can look at other town bylaws that they have hundreds of clients across the country and quite a few in Massachusetts, so we can, they can look at what other towns do to say, oh, we need a bylaw on this. Well, we don't need a bylaw on this, but we can look. So it, it gives resources. That was quite exciting to the committee to that see that. That is really exciting, because mm -hmm. yeah. um, then we can update, and that yeah. should help us with um, um, public requests, shouldn't it? Because our bylaws would be less. Oh yeah, that crazy. yeah, right. We they would have to. They could. We can just point them to where to go. Right, and, and so that should yeah. ultimately help right. save staff time. And we had a meeting a few days later. Um, I had a colleague of mine who has been on his bylaws review committee in Beckett for years. He just reti he just let, stepped down as the moderator, and he talked about what they do. So one of the outcomes might, may or may not be that there would be a bylaw to have a bylaw committee, you know, established to to sort of keep up the effort on this work and make sure that we, you know, clarify and, you know, just stay on top of things. Uh, so. while, while we're on appointments, uh, the Sewer Study Committee has uh, two openings, and uh, Josh Schimmel would like to be appointed to that, and I thought he'd be a great oh, guy you know to do that. Um, we were talking about that last week. We forgot, I mean, last meeting, we forgot to put that on this agenda. I didn't. Um, we can't add it. Can we, can we, um, uh, under new business not anticipated? Yeah, I don't see it as something that's, that, um, uh, why not? I don't think the Attorney General would, Well, you know, you know what, we, get can, us, um, yeah. we can reappoint him on the 23rd, but it would be nice if we could appoint him tonight. Yeah, and then or say that you plan to appoint him and, and, yeah. Yeah, and right. I just got off. It didn't okay. make it to the agenda because that's my fault. Kip. I um, okay, didn't I'm catch just, it. I, I, I'm fine with that, but I'm just curious because I'd like to learn why why can't can't you do it, or what would be the problem of doing it? Because it wasn't on the agenda 48 hours. You, ha you this is part of huh. making okay. it legal. There's certain things. Uh, there were small things that we can sort of add after it's been posted, but the open meeting law changed a few years back where. Um, maybe about seven years ago, where you not only just post the meeting, you have to post the agenda too. And it doesn't give you any freedom or it, leeway. It, to it does, and, and what is it? You know, things but that are it, unforeseen, and you're now talking about how you discussed it previously. Yeah. So I'm not sure, but it, it okay. certainly seems to me you could say can, that can we intend to put this on the next agenda. We'd like to and encourage him to come to any meeting that might happen. Okay. All right. And we'll just take well, care okay. of it at the next agenda, we'll, next we'll, meeting. We're, uh, we're meeting in two Make weeks. A note to yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So, but okay. but we'll we can appoint. Do you tonight. have one or two people? We just have one. I, I'm, yeah, just I'm, one. We I'm, have two openings, but just that's one person. I'm going to um, make a motion to um, appoint um, Joshua Shamel. Is that is how you say his last name? Yeah. Um, to the sewer committee, and then you second. I'll it. second it. Sure. And then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So. He's appointed it as of now, and then we'll just put it on the agenda for in two weeks in case it's contested. Because okay. the reason why you do that to okay. protect yourself is if he's involved in a vote. I see. And and the vote is contested, that he might I not see. have a legitimate. Okay. I mean, this could be looked at as okay. not a legitimate. Right, and traditionally, when you if if you get called out on something by the AG's office on a they make you do it again. So okay. if we're going to just cover it, we're ah, doing it again. Okay. So, so, so we'll do, we do it, and then we'll do it again. Okay. Or they fine you, and they okay. make you pay for a sewer pump. <laughs> it, no. It's just better not. Okay. Anything right. that potentially could be contested down the road is you not something so you want to yeah. put up. Yes, it's I do. business not as um, anticipated. It's S-C-H-I-M-M-E-L. Okay. Joshua. I must have seen it somewhere. Okay. Um, do you want to fill the other, or do you want to announce that you're looking yeah. for someone? Uh, I'd to? rather not right now. I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I've, I'm speaking, I'm going to speak with someone else about it, so. This, this way he can come and be um, yeah. officially on. He has been and, But coming, then but definitely sure. be officially on after this, because the next meeting is the 17th, right? That's what I have on my calendar. Okay, yep. That's what so, I was just looking for. So on the 23rd, you just reappoint him. Okay. And then you should be okay. Okay. Um, um. The only other thing um, I, I just wanted to bring up, it's not really new business, but um, since we had the risk of elevation change yeah. and we had hits on West Nile disease, um, if we had something like triple E, we would send out, we'd push out a message on code red. Yeah. And so I'm just making sure that people, um, if, you, if you don't think you, or you don't know if you have signed up for code red or you've never gotten a code red sign um, alert, um, call from us as a town. We we practice like um, at the town meeting usually, um, and we've had a couple in the past. Um, so if if you've not ever received a code red call from the town, make sure you're signed up for the code red. Okay, and and that's how you're going to get information in an emergency from us. And that's the kind of thing we would push out if there was um, you know a mosquito that was. Um, say with triple E. That, that is really serious. It's a whole different category than West Nile disease. We would send out a code red. So I'm just asking people to be, you'd want code red if there was, you know, information on road closures because of a hurricane or, or information on some emergency that we're having in town. Okay. So please make sure you sign up for code red. And um, I had gone to, um, a meeting, emergency planning meeting um, for this, you know, Harriman Dam drill, the FEMA drill, hard knocks. And um, one of the things that has come up again and again is uh, family, is evacuation planning is not, we, we've done so much planning on sheltering in place. I don't want to say there's, there's no evacuation plans, but we have not tested our evacuation plans and people just don't think about evacuating. You need to think about, you know, where if you have older kids, your younger kids, you tend to know where they are. But if you have older kids, where are you going to meet if the older kids are spread over whatever activities they're doing? Where are you going to meet as a family? And then where are you going to go? Um, what, what are your plans? Who in your family um, have med uh, medical needs that might require medicines ahead of time? Um, what animals? would you evacuate? I remember here, I was in town, um, we had a train derailment in up, Upper Road, and I think this was like in 2005 or 2004. And um, I was here, and my daughter was at home. She was only in like eighth grade, and she wasn't, um, you know, she didn't drive. And um, my husband, of course, was working in Boston, and. You know, we have horses, and, I, you know, there was no way for me to evacuate. And here we were getting, you know, there was, it was, we thought it was ammonia spill, and, I mean, this awful stuff, and, right. and they were going to sh right. evacuate up a road, and I couldn't even get home. So you need, people need to think about that kind of stuff and, and really plan. So um, try, to, try to think about that when you sign up for the Code Red. Think about your family, what you need to do if you had to leave the area, because it really is concerning to me that that's one area that we're not really prepared for. And as a town, we need to look at that. And so I, um, I guess the only other note I had was I did thank the highway department for treating the mosquitoes and the catch basins, but I also want to thank them so very much for um, taking care of the trash at Stillwater Road, I mean Stillwater Bridge area. There was considerable amount of trash and the highway department picked that up. It's Doesn't the state do that? They're supposed to. We've lit, written letters of complaint. Got a tremendous amount of newspaper and Facebook play. Oh, it was my gosh. big and news, a lot of comments. People, you is know, it a different department than the highway department that deals with it? Is it DCR? DCR. Uh, DCR. It's yeah. complicated. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they have um, a staff right at Sugarloaf Mountain. They won't send them down to clean up their trash? Not in their lane, I guess. You know. wow. yeah. We, we are, are making complaints. Yeah, it's a job. 
Anyway, the, okay. our highway department took care of it. It was really a growing pile, and it was like well, attracting more. One of the things that people do, and I've done this, and I wish I did it every time, but um, when you're out and you're going for a walk, take a bag, wear a glove, pick up litter. I mean, this is big litter, but, you know, there are a lot of people who just are doing that now, just knowing that there are others who are littering all the time. And that was some of the feedback people wrote in on comments because right. the police uh, Facebook page put it on. Did you? No, the, but the police didn't. There were a lot of comments on that. People in Greenfield weighing in. It's a problem there, too. So. Yep. That's it. Yep. Um, so I can't think of anything else. Do you have anything else? No, I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, and I will second that. And everyone have a really lovely evening. <laughs>